here for our, that's what I was waiting for, now recording. And we have our worship introduction video. The church is not a building, it is the family of God's people. And we are delighted that you are here online and, uh, and in person here, and also be joining us later on and through the recording. Welcome everyone. This week we have our choir practices at their normal time, and all announcements can be found in the Ruthven Pastoral Charge News, which is sent out weekly. Also, I've learned earlier on today that sometimes people uh, in the sanctuary have a real hard time with the, the screen and reading. So if you can let me know or let the office know, Brenda at the office, and we can make arrangements for the service in large print like it's so what's sent out and it can be made large in case people are having problems with it. Okay, uh, um, what's not in the announcements and it's on the shelf down, there's about 10 copies more can be made. These are daily scripture readings geared to our lectionary. We are following the uh, complementary lectionary uh, all the alternate one and sort of gives readings uh, through the week except for Sunday because you have your scripture readings. And so if anybody's interested, there's copies on the shelf on your left as you come in. Uh, and if we run out, we can always make more copies. Just let me know. On this third Sunday in creation time, we have our call to worship. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. Let us pray. Creator God, we praise you for this world as we continue to learn more of the vastness of your cosmos and the smallest particles of each atom. We stand in awe that you created all things in a great harmonious design. Open our eyes and ears that we might take delight in the beauty and variety of sky and sea, of desert and mountain, of plants and flowers, of birds and fish, of creatures large and small, and of humankind, the crown of your creation. We praise you for the world you have made, maintain, and give to us to care for and enjoy. Amen. Let us sing in Voices United, praise with joy the world's creator, and Voices United 312, 312. Mm -hmm.
as we are in the Lord's presence, we're aware of our sins and our failures, and so we bring our prayer of confession before God. Let us pray. God of all creation, on the first day you made day and night, forgive us for taking for granted the dependable patterns of your world. Open our eyes to see the beauty of the cosmos you created as our home. On the second day, you made the sky. Forgive us for polluting the air. Help us see how best to restore and renew your creation. On the third day, you made the seas and plants. Forgive us for spoiling the seas. Give us resolve to change our hurtful habits. On the fourth day you made the sun and moon. Forgive us for failing to pause in praise of their splendor. Open our lips so that we will sing your praise. On the fifth day you made swarms of living creatures. Forgive us for seeing their value only in terms of serving our interests. Give us new opportunities to delight in their beauty and diversity. On the sixth day, you made humankind in your image. Forgive us for denying dignity to all your people. Work through us until all know their worth as your creatures. On the seventh day, you rested. Forgive us for failing to take joy in our rest. Help us to enter your rhythm of rest, even on this day of worship. Through Christ our Lord, firstborn of all creation. Amen. Let us receive the promise and the assurance of pardon and forgiveness given to all who believe and repent. That in that it is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and to call us to change our ways and to care for creation and to care for all people. Thanks be to God who loves us and who forgives us. And now we have our time of remembering the Queen and we have our young at heart moment with the Queen and Paddington Bear. And then we have remembering the Queen, the defender of the faith. And then we will have a minute uh, of silence and thankful remembrance of the Queen, and then we'll be having a new hymn. But I'll uh, introduce the time of silence, but we'll now have two videos, uh, the Queen in Paddington and the Queen Defender of the Faith. about the Queen, her constant sense of duty and her devotion to God. The Queen's faith was evident from an early age. At the beginning of World War II, 13-year-old Elizabeth handed her father, King George VI, a Christian poem which she later quoted in a public speech. On her 21st birthday, she dedicated her life to her people and asked for prayer. God help me to make good my vow. In 1953, over 38 million people tuned in for the coronation. Here the Queen publicly promised to maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the Gospel. After the birth of her first grandchild, Peter Phillips, the Queen shared her hope that her family would follow Jesus, saying, I would like nothing more than that my grandchildren should hold dear his ideals. In 2002, Her Majesty chose to boldly speak out about her faith, saying, I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. The Queen's annual broadcast has become a much anticipated part of the Christmas Day traditions for families across the nation. In recent years, it's been a platform she's used to openly share her faith. 8.3 million of you tuned in in 2012 and saw the Queen talk about God who sent his son to serve, not to be served, and in doing so, restored love and service to the center of our lives in the person of Jesus Christ. 
And in her 2014 Christmas broadcast, she shared the gospel with the nation saying, for me, the life of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, whose birth we celebrate today, is an inspiration and an anchor in my life. A role model of reconciliation and forgiveness, he stretched out his hands in love, acceptance and healing. And to that we say, Amen. Now we'll have uh, a minute of remembrance and thanksgiving. Got the picture, there we go. There. And now we'll have a hymn that was written on this occasion. It really doesn't have a. a Marcus hiding behind the thing. <laughs> it's got a long title, a hymn on the death of the queen. Uh, let us now remain seated as we sing this hymn.
Let us pray. Greater God, we give thanks for the life of Her Most Gracious Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. We honor her life of service, built on a firm foundation of faith and an exemplary commitment to duty. Comfort those who mourn and bring peace to those in distress. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As Abel, I would ask you to stand for the singing of God Save the King. Now we'll have the Ministry of Music by the choir, and then uh, Laura will offer our uh, scripture readings.
Our first scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Amos, chapter 8, verses 4 to 7. And I'm not quite sure what version this is from, but it has an interesting twist that you can easily understand the message. Listen to this, you who walk all over the week, you who treat the poor people as nothing, who say, when's my next paycheck coming so I can go out and live it up? And how long till the weekend when I can go out and have a good time? Who give little and take much, who never do an honest day's work. You exploit the poor using them. And then when they're used up, you discard them. God swears against the arrogance of Jacob. I'm keeping track of their every last sin. Now, our responsive reading today is going to be sung. It's in Voices United, page 835. It's Psalm 113. And we're singing the first two verses. I'm not sure if there's more, but there's two listed here. Our second scripture reading for the day is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. The first thing I want you to do is pray. Pray every way you know how, for everyone you know. Pray especially for rulers and their governments to rule well, so we can go quietly about our business of living simply in humble contemplation. This is the way our Savior God wants us to live. He wants us not only but everyone to be saved, you know, everyone to get to know the truth that we have learned, that there is one God and only one, and one priest meditator between God and us, Jesus, who offered himself in exchange for everyone held captive by sin to set them all free. Eventually, the news is going to get out. This and this only has been my appointed work, getting this news to those who have never heard of God and explaining how it works by simple faith and plain true. Our gospel reading is from uh, a uh, reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, reading verses 1 to 13. Listen for the word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There was once a rich man who had a manager. He got reports that the manager had been taking advantage of his position by running up huge personal expenses. So he called him in and said, What's this I hear about you? You're fired. And I want a complete audit of your books. The manager said to himself, what am I going to do? I've lost my job as a manager. I'm not strong enough for a laboring job. I'm too proud to beg. 
I've got a plan. Here's what I'll do. Then, when I'm turned out into the street, people will take me into their houses. Then he went at it. One after another, he called in the people who were in debt to his master. He said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He replied, A hundred jugs of oil. The manager said, Here, take your bill, sit down here quickly now and write fifty. So the next he said, And what do you owe? He answered, A hundred sacks of wheat. He said, Take your bill, write in eighty. Now, here's the surprise. The master praised the crooked manager. And why? Because he knew how to look after himself. Streetwise people are smarter in this regard than law-abiding citizens. They are on constant alert, looking for angles, surviving by their wits. I want you to be smart in the same way. But for what is right, using every adversity to stimulate you to creative survival, to concentrate your attention on the bare essentials so you'll live, really live, and not just complacently just get by in good behavior. Jesus went on to make these comments. If you're honest in small things, you'll be honest in big things. If you're a crook in small things, you'll be a crook in big things. If you're not honest in small jobs, who will put you in charge of the store? No worker can serve two bosses. Either he'll hate the first, and love the second, or adore the first and despise the second. You can't serve both God and the bank. This is the word of the Lord. Let us remain seated as we sing All Things Bright and Beautiful, verses 1, 2, and 5. It's found in Voices United at 291. Let us pray. Lord God, at the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the waters. So send your spirit to us now to open our hearts and minds to receive the recreating power of your word through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Well, the passage I've chosen to focus on is from our gospel reading uh, and verse 8. And this whole story in uh, the gospel, Luke's gospel, quite a few people want to get rid of this story. They don't want it because here Jesus is praising a corrupt manager, a shrewd manager, sort of putting it in polite terms. Uh, from the New Living Bible Translation, the rich man had to admire, that's the fellow who owned it and who was getting, uh, how shall I say, robbed. Uh, he had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. And it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of the light. Verse eight. And I wanna make it clear in the sermon uh, we do not condone theft, thievery, any type of corruption or breaking the law. We, we, that's not, <laughs> we're not promoting that. We're not promoting that. But it is true, the children of the world are more shrewd in dealing with the world than the children of the light. There, are, there is the idea and perception that the followers of Jesus are to be naive, simpletons, to uh, be ignorant of things, to have their heads in the clouds, uh, as like so heavenly minded they're of no earthly use, that you know, they're just up there in the sky, they're not realistic, they're just idealistic. And, be, and they're called to be blind followers of Jesus. Blind followers. No, we have blind faith, but we're not blind followers. When Jesus was sending out the 70 disciples, he said in verse 16 in Matthew, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be as shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. That's Jesus' instructions. Blind faith is not being a blind follower. Jesus is calling his followers to be sharp, to be aware of the ways of the world, to learn about the world, to learn about life, to appreciate life, not to hide from life. The church, when they send out missionaries, and I say it from my family's experience to China, they, they were, and there's nothing wrong with the term missionaries, the, they went out as, to China with three purposes, uh, to help educate, to help heal, to provide medical support, and to share the love of Jesus, and to help educate, to help grow the world's knowledge. Uh, the church created universities, and the one created in China, where my uh, parents were in Chengdu, still goes. They brought uh, the university there. And uh, thanks to the missionaries, the university was at, and I know some of, many remember George Muser, the late George Muser. Well, his father, uh, began the, the, pharmacological, the pharmaceutical department at the university teaching students in pharmacy. His father is still noted and recognized in Chengdu in China for his work in the university, his work in education. We're called to learn to be appreciate the world around us, not to hide from the world. And education is a part of it, to learn and to gain knowledge. To be creative in the world. And look, remember the story, uh, the uh, people were carrying uh, an, their ill friend to Jesus. And to me, aside, that's, a, that's an image of prayer where the fellow can't even pray for himself, he's on this a stretcher and his friends are carrying him. That's what we do in prayer. We carry people in prayer. And <clears throat> they came to the place where Jesus was, the house, 
<clears throat> and they couldn't get in. It was all crowded. And so what did they do? They went up to the roof, carrying their friend, it was flat roof, and uh, made a hole in the roof. It could easily be repaired, don't worry about it. And they lowered him down in front of Jesus. That was creative. They didn't sort of say, oh, well, we can't get in, too bad, so, you know, too bad, so sad, let's go home. They said, let's do something creative. And that's appreciative, to be creative. And this is what Jesus, I believe, was aiming at. He wanted his followers to be enlightened and to be creative because he said, you know, look at that one person. The shrewd manager praised him. He was creative. Uh, to bring it in modern terms, well, modern terms in 1876, Mark Twain's book, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Remember it from way back when, from school? The uh, story of a mischievous young boy uh, who uh, wittingly tricked his way to getting everything he wanted. I like, and a prominent scene in the book is the fence scene. You may remember that fence scene. Tom is being punished. He had done something wrong. I think he came in late. I'm, I forget that. But he's being punished by Aunt Polly. And he's got to paint this, whitewash this 30 long, feet long fence that's nine feet tall. He wants to go out and play. He doesn't want to paint the fence. Well, um, uh, he sees uh, one of his friends comes around, Ben Rogers, and uh, commented about Tom's work and uh, in a way laughing because he's got to work. Tom wonderfully changes it around, if you'll remember the story. Uh, yeah. Well, you have to work. And Tom goes, what work? What work? And he proceeds to paint with precision in that. And, and you know that he just does it. And poor Ben is there. Well, you know, like, what are you doing? You know, uh, not everybody can paint the fence. He wanted to, Ben wanted to pitch in. And, no, no, Aunt Polly said only Tom can paint the fence. And, and like he was lying all the way through. So we have this lying person and he gets Ben and others to paint the fence for him. And he sits back chewing on Ben's apple who gave him to paint the fence, collecting all the stuff. And he has a wonderful time and the fence gets painted. Now, if we were in proper terms, we would change the book around and say, no, no, that's, that's all wrong. Aunt Polly has to come in and say, you know, that's wrong and punish Tom. The wonder of that story is you see how marvelous Tom Sawyer is, how creative he is. <laughs> and it's not good stuff. It's like the evil or the shrewd manager. You got to admire them. It's, it's wonderful. So... This is the creativity that Jesus wants his followers to have. He wants his followers to be, who are children of the light, to be actually in the light. Rather than letting the children of the darkness have the way, be smart, be smart. Sisters and brothers in Christ, children of light, we are called to be enlightened people, not people in the dark, not blind followers, but enlightened creator followers of Jesus. To God be all glory, honor, and praise, now and forever. Amen and amen. Let us now sing for the music of creation in Voices United 535. 535.
we now present ourselves and our gifts as we sing What Can I Do More Voices 191. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts and our lives to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Now, uh, we'll have our affirmation of faith in this season of creation. We're using the historic expression of faith, the Apostles' Creed. As Protestants, we have uh, a slight different understanding than some on the Creed, the Apostles' Creed. Yes, born of the Virgin Mary. Mary was a virgin, we believe, when Jesus was born. But we do not have the... Uh, the view that was begun in the 1800s by the Pope of the Perpetual Virgin Mary. Because in scripture, uh, Jesus has brothers and sisters and uh, not half brothers and half sisters as some say. Uh, and then when we affirm the Holy Catholic Church, we're using it in the term Catholic means universal. Uh, I, as I've said before, I have fun with my Roman Catholic friends who often say, well, we're Catholic. And I said, no, you're Roman Catholic. <laughs> they, and that's when I get my dirty glares at and sort of, we're all Catholic. We're Catholic Orthodox, Catholic, Roman Catholic, different, we're, but we're all Catholic, a part of the family of Jesus Christ. And that's what we believe when we say the Holy Catholic Church. That's the church that we are thinking of. I would invite you now to, as able, if you wish, to affirm this faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, we praise and thank you for upholding and ruling all of creation. By your eternal providence, for your sustaining hand in creation, providing leaders in government and church leaders, and for the ways in which you have worked through our congregation and pastoral charge, for the riches you have lavished upon each of us and for the gift of your Son through whom we are redeemed. As our sovereign God holding our world 
and our lives in your hands, we intercede on behalf of the nations of the world and we would especially pray for the Ukraine and that there be peace and we pray for the people there. We pray for all you have put in government. We pray for our communities and those who serve it and your church that it might expand your love and care. We pray that your powerful hands may be evident in the lives, life of His Majesty King Charles, of world leaders and church leaders. And in all circumstances, may we have the faith to hold on to your promise that you will weave good things out of bad. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God to whom we belong, the kingdom and the power and the glory be yours forever. Amen. Well, we prepare to go forth. Uh, uh, if you're going to be watching the Queen's uh, funeral service tomorrow, you Westminster website, Westminster Abbey's website, Sometimes on the day of the service we'll have the order of service you can download and watch or follow. I know they definitely will have it afterwards, but they would have uh, the order of service. And also, if the, today's uh, Battle of Britain Sunday and in Jackson Park there's a service at 2 o'clock. Be careful of the bees. They got me last year. Uh, and that, they're grumpy little things. You know, I used to think bees were nice. Now they're on my hit list. <laughs> Not really. I still like honey. But those are things that are happening. Let us prepare to go forth and singing Creating God and Voices United 265. the body of Christ. May you have the heart of Christ, tender in mercy. May you have the eyes of Christ to see a world in pain. 
May you have the feet of Christ to bring good news to a world, a world in desperate need of Christ's peace, Christ's love, and Christ's mercy. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.